happy day to be here. We've got enough cloud cover to make it just about perfect. I appreciate everybody showing up here today. Well, if you would, I'm going to start before I make some comments. To the pledge the flag, if you don't mind, join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and Thank y'all. Appreciate that. So, in six days, in six days, early voting starts in Georgia. In six days, we have the opportunity to change what D.C. looks like. It won't happen if you don't go vote. It won't happen if you stay at home. It won't happen if you don't talk to your friends that share the same mindset you do about the value of conservative values in, in the, not only in the state of Georgia, but across our nation. It won't matter if they don't go vote. Now, I'm going to tell you, it starts on Monday. But if you want to wait till November 8th, that's fine. That's great. Don't delay on November 8th, though. We need you out there. This is going to change the shape of our, of our nation going forward. Isn't it great to have that kind of power at your fingertips? And they're at your fingertips, not somebody else's. So he's going to be here in just a minute. I just wanted to stress to y'all the importance of our duty, our obligation, of all the things. How many veterans we got in the crowd today? Thank you, veterans. <laughs> If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be up here having this conversation with you because somebody else would be making these decisions for you. So starting Monday, what are you going to do? And if you can't make it early, what are you going to do on November 8th? How many people are you going to take with you? A thousand. Okay, he's the winner. You get to go to the front row up here. All right, thank you. He'll be up here in just a second. I just wanted to get a second just to stress to y'all again how important what we're doing here over the next, what, Three weeks, four weeks? We need you. Thank you. Georgia! Yeah. It's a, go Army! It, it is great to be back in the state of Georgia. It's, it's especially good to be here with the next United States Senator from Georgia, Herschel Walker. I gotta, Herschel, I, Herschel I, I have to say, a lot of our old Razorback fans haven't forgotten what you used to do to the Arkansas Razorbacks. But I have, they have no hard feelings because they want Republicans back in charge in Washington. And they know they know that Herschel Walker, Herschel Walker is going to help build a Republican majority in the United States Senate. And they know that Herschel Walker will be a leader 
in the Senate, just like he's been a leader in sports and in business for the state of Georgia. Unlike, unlike your current U.S. Senator, Raphael Warnock. Now, now Georgia, Georgia took a chance on Raphael Warnock two years ago. Put him on a little trial run. And for two years, for two years, Raphael Warnock has been nothing but a rubber stamp for Joe Biden and the Democratic agenda. He votes with Joe Biden 96% of the time. And look at what that's gotten us. Record high inflation. 13% since Raphael Warnock got to Washington and started rubber stamping Joe Biden's agenda. That means for every dollar you had in your bank account just two years ago, it's worth 87 cents now. Why is that? It didn't just happen. It's not an accident. It's because Raphael Warnock and Joe Biden have spent trillions of dollars that we don't have. They've been printing money for two years. They've been making working families across Georgia struggle to pay the bills at the end of the month, struggle to put food on the table for their kids. I would, acu I would accuse them of spending money like drunken sailors, but it would be an insult to drunken sailors. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Look at the price of gas. Look at the price of gas. But look what Raphael Warnock does. He voted four times to end the Keystone Pipeline. He voted twice to ban the most innovative techniques that we have to produce American oil and gas. He's voted to put taxes on American energy. That's why gasoline costs $4 a gallon across this country. Raphael Warnock is not working for Georgia. He's working for Joe Biden and the radical Democrats in Washington. Just how radical are they? In their $5 trillion of spending, one of the things they did was give stimulus checks to prisoners. Think about that. Took your money, took your money, and Raphael Warnock gave it to depraved criminals sitting in prison. Murderers and rapists and the carjackers that are apparently so productive up in Atlanta that you can now get a free uh, anti-carjacking device for your car in Atlanta. You can't turn on the news today without seeing more crimes across this state. Again, because Raphael Warnock votes with the Democrats 96% of the times. Because he has more sympathy for criminals than he does for their victims and certainly than he does for the police who work to keep our people free and safe. Herschel Walker, by contrast, will always back the blue and crack down on criminals. At, and at a time, at a time when drug deaths are at a record high in our country, more than 100,000 people died last year because of drugs, almost twice as many as we lost in the entire Vietnam War, Raphael Warnock has voted with Joe Biden to keep our border wide open. Five, five million illegal aliens have entered our country just since Joe Biden arrived in the White House and Raphael Warnock arrived in the U.S. Senate. And what does Raphael Warnock do? He doesn't vote to build the wall. In fact, he's voted to stop building the wall. He doesn't vote to hire more Border Patrol agents. In fact, he's voted to hire 87,000 more IRS agents. Here's what Raphael Warnock thinks. You add 5 million illegal aliens to this country, that it's time to give amnesty to illegal aliens. Herschel Walker will vote to secure our border, to build the wall, and to crack down on illegal immigration. Yeah. On, on issue after issue, Raphael Warnock, who campaigned with his puppies two years ago, has proven to be simply a lapdog, Joe Biden. Herschel Walker will be a champion for the people of Georgia. Just like, just like he was a champion in football, he'll be a champion in the United States Senate. And what he needs now more than anything is your help. I know we're at the time in a political campaign when people get tired of television ads and the lies they tell about Herschel Walker. But let me promise you, the most important advertisement that Herschel Walker can have for the next 28 days is all of you talking to your friends, 
and your family and your neighbors and your co-worker, co-workers and saying simply, I'm for Herschel, here's why, and I hope you will be too. And I promise you, I, I promise you, if you will be Herschel's voice for this next month in this campaign, Herschel will be your voice in the United States Senate for the next six months. Let's go elect Herschel Walker to the United States Senate. So let's give a big round of applause for Tom Cotton, who came all the way from Arkansas. So I was thinking about all the reasons that people ought to vote for Herschel Walker. And they came across a problem. There's too many. There's way too many reasons that each one of you should vote for Herschel Walker, and everybody in Georgia, Georgia should. Every single voter should. So let me write, I'm gonna, I wrote these down, so let me go through it for a second. Now, if you like paying more for everything, you should vote for Warnick because he and Joe Biden did that. If you like paying double for gas, vote for Warnick because he and Joe Biden did that. How about if you like mortgage rates doubling? You should, you should thank Warnick for doing that. Empty shelves, open borders. If you like fentanyl pouring into this country from our open borders, and killing our children. You should vote for Warnick because Warnick and Joe Biden did that. If you like doubling the size of the IRS, 87,000 more agents. Raphael Warnick and Joe Biden did that. If you like men destroying women's sports. If you like the FBI intimidating parents who speak up at school board meetings. Warnick and Joe Biden did that. If you like giving your tax dollars to the country of Iran while they're chanting death to America. How about our pitiful retreat from Afghanistan and leaving billions of dollars of our, of our service equipment right there in Afghanistan? How about our military wasting time teaching warriors about pronouns and critical race theory? Again, thank Warnick and Joe Biden for that. How about forcing working class people to pay off loans for rich kids? How about men pretending they can have babies? How about your debt and your government spending like that money that's going out of style? Warnick and Joe Biden, they did all that. How about if you like abortion all the way up to the moment of birth and forcing taxpayers to pay for it? If you like socialism, if you believe that America is a racist country, you should vote for Warnick and Joe Biden because they did that. They believe that. If you think we should reimagine and defund the police, if you like the violent crime wave injuring and killing innocent Americans all across the country and here in this great state of Georgia, you can thank Warnick and Joe Biden for that because they did it. If you like rank incompetence, you should vote for Warnick because he and Joe Biden are that. Yes, exactly. However, if you want to vote for a man who believes America is a great country, a man who has overcome great adversity, a man who wants to bring the people of Georgia together, and a man who believes our best days can be ahead of us. Well, then you should vote for the next U.S. Senator from the great state of Georgia, Herschel Walker. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you so much for coming out. Welcome to West Georgia. Well, thank you. You know, first, I always, always acknowledge my Lord Jesus Christ because he said if you don't acknowledge him, he's not going to acknowledge you. And when I come knocking, I want him to let me in. I also acknowledge my wife, Julie, because she's in this race with me. And I'm going to make this short and sweet. I'm going to make it short and sweet because I know it's getting hot out here. But I'm going to make it short and sweet. But I'm going to give you something that uh, you may have never heard. And I always tell the story all the time about this man that died early in life. He died early in life and he got to heaven and St. Peter met him at the pearly gates. And St. Peter said, sir, you're here a little bit early right now that your name ain't on the road. So you're the only one in history that get an opportunity to decide where you want to go. Say, so I'm going to take you to heaven and I'm going to take you to hell, and you got to decide what you want to do. 
So he puts him in his elevator and he takes him all the way down to hell. And the doors open up. And there's a party going on. He sees some of his friends down there. He's having a great time. And all of a sudden, St. Peter came to him and said, you ready to go? You ready to go? And the guy said, I got to leave now. I said, yeah, you got to make a decision. This is important. So he puts him in his elevator and he takes him all the way up to heaven. And the people are floating around on clouds and having a nice time. The weather's nice. St. Peter came to him after a couple of hours. And St. Peter said, have you made your mind up? Have you made your mind up? And the guy said, well, St. Pete, I hate to tell you this. I think I want to go to hell. Said that seemed like my type of place. I think I want to go to hell. St. Peter said, you sure? He said, yeah. St. Peter puts him back in that elevator and send him all the way back down to hell. The doors open up now and it's hot. People are crying. They're miserable. And they said, the guy said, wait a minute, wait a minute. A couple of hours ago, there was a party going on. Satan shows up and said, a couple of hours ago, I was campaigning. <laughs> and the reason I'm telling you that now, come November, guys, wake up. Don't let them be campaigning. Come campaigning for you. They're campaigning for your vote. Because right now, you can see what they're doing. They'll do whatever it takes. Which say whatever they have to say because they want this seat right here. But I don't think they know that they woke up a bear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not just a dog now. I'm a bear. So they got to bring more than that. Because what they don't know is, hey, the gas prices, hey, my family can't take that. What they don't know is wokeness in my military. No, my family can't take that. What they don't know is I don't want them calling my men and women in blue thugs and criminals. No, I can't take that. It is time for us to stand up. It's time for us to straighten up. And don't let them take us down in that elevator. Yeah, I think I'm sick and tired of it. I hope you're sick and tired of it. Have you seen the crime in the streets? Hey, have you seen that border wide open? But I'm going to tell you something you may not know. 70% of the drugs coming from that border goes through Atlanta. That means you're going to have all the crime. You're going to have all the human trafficking. And what is Senator Warnock not doing is absolutely nothing. And right now, he's going to talk sweet to you. He's going to dress nice. But two years, he's been in office. And can you take six more of this here? You can't take six more of this. It's time for us to get champions there. That's going to get behind our military. It's time for us to get champions there. They're going to get behind our police officers. It's time for us to get champions there. They're going to get behind our kids in school that they can quit calling our parents domestic terrorists because they want to know what's being taught in our schools. Hey, just think about it. Pronoun in our military. How do you identify in our military? This is war times. What happened to push-ups? <laughs> Sit-ups. Because I can tell you right now, China, Iran, and Russia not talking about pronouns. It's time for us to wake up. Don't let them take us down in that elevator. They're lying to you. They're telling you it's the new normal. I'm telling you it's not. The new normal is let's get back to being energy independent again. Because I heard it one time. I heard it one time. That I heard one great president say they have peace through strength. And we know it's peace through strength. But the problem is we're giving up our strength, and sooner or later we're going to have no peace. Amen. So I said, what we got to do is get out in November and vote. What we got to do is tell 10 of your friends to get out in there in November and vote. To tell 10 of their friends, tell 10 of their friends, it is time for us to take this country back. Because they've had it enough. Two years is enough of this high inflation, crime, wide open border, unhappiness. You heard I'm trying to separate my family. I don't care what color you are. Remember the church mine Senator Red Warnot is in. Remember that church, one of the greatest black leaders ever. Not the color of your skin, but the content of your character. And all, all he talks about is the color of your skin. I heard it. America need to apologize for its whiteness. He's a minister. Has he ever heard of forgiveness? Have you ever heard of forgiveness? Have you ever heard of redemption? So it's time for all of us to stand up. We can't continue to do this. We got to get out and vote. We got to change it. I'm tired of hearing people complain. All I'm hearing right now in Washington is people complaining. They did it. 
The people on the left did it. They took us down in that elevator, got us to defund our police. We shouldn't have never defunded our police. They got us right now believing that we can bring wokeness into our military. We should never bring wokeness into our military. The greatest lethal fighting force ever assembled in our United States military. And they're bringing wokeness into our military. And then, since you've gotten a little bit too smart, you don't fall for it. You don't let them take you in that elevator. So they're going to take your kids now. They're going to take your kids down now because they want to tell the white kids you're an oppressor. They want to tell the black kids you're a victim. No, all of them are victorious. But what we got to do, what we got to do is stand up and we got to get out and vote. And I want to thank you again for coming out. And I want to leave you with this. I've been leaving you with this because I'm from the country. And I tell everybody, I'm this country boy. Come to uh, Friday, y'all. I better watch it. There's going to be a debate. There's going to be a debate. And I told him to quit running from me. Quit running. Because I will catch you. You quit running. I will catch you. But, as they've been saying, something is better somewhere else. And I'm here to tell you it's not. So I've been telling this little story about this bull out in the field with six cows. And three of them are pregnant. So you know he got something going on. But all he cared about is kept his nose against the fence looking at three other cows that didn't belong to him. Now all he had to do is eat grass. But no, no, no. He thought something was better somewhere else. So he decided, I want to get over there. So one day he measured the fence up. And he said, I think I can jump this. So that day came where he got back. And he got back and as he took off running, he dove over that fence and his belly got cut up onto the bottom. But as he made it over on the other side, took it off and got so excited about it. And he ran to the top of that hill, but when he got up there, he realized they were bulls too. So what I'm telling you, don't think something is better somewhere else. This is the greatest country in the world today. And the reason why is the people. The reason why is the people. <coughs> so don't let them separate you. Let them tell you these things. Don't let them take you down in that elevator. And I want to tell you, God is good, isn't he? Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you guys now.